Welcome to episode nine of the Blue Collar Coder Introduction to React series. This is actually the final episode of this initial run. I'm Jack Harrington at Jaher on Twitter. So React has had a long history. In the beginning with about 0.13, we had react.create class, and that was our way of creating components. And then we moved into the ES6 class syntax. And then obviously in the last couple of years, we've gone with the functional syntax that we've done so far using functions to create components. But if you're working on an older application or in some circumstances you actually need one of these, you need to know how to make a class component or at least work on an existing class component. So in this one, we're gonna take the app functional component and convert it into a class component. You get to see how that's done. All right, without further ado, let's go convert ourselves a function. So we're going to change our app component from a function-based component to a class-based component. So the first thing to do is to define the class. And then we'll say that it extends React component. You have to have React component as your base class. And then we'll create a constructor. And that constructor takes the properties. And now the first thing you have to do in this constructor is you always have to call your superclass and give it those properties. The other thing is required in a class component is a render method. The render method does not take any arguments. So let's convert the state over. So back in the constructor, I'm going to define this.state. And that's an object. And I'm going to say that our filter starts as an empty string. Our Pokemon starts as an empty array. And our selected item starts as null. And that's the functional equivalent of these use states that we had in the functional version of the component. So now let's grab our JSX and paste that in as the return of the render. So now we no longer have filter set. Instead, we need to do this.setState. And this.setState takes an object. So what we want to do is say that we want all of the original object by spreading this.state and then adding the filter key with the new value. And that's the class equivalent of filter set. Now down here in the table, we need to change Pokemon to this.state.pokemon. So everything coming into this component, whether it be properties, which would be this.props, or state, which would be this.state, is going to be on this. Next thing to do is change the filter on in the includes. Then we need to update the on select to again set state but this time we'll be setting selected item and now we got to update the pokemon info at the bottom with this dot state now i think we're done with the basics here so i'm just going to copy out the react use effect because we'll get to that in a second and then remove the functional version of the app component. And we'll just paste that use effect into a comment and see how we go. All right, well, filter is not defined, so let's go and see where we messed up. Looks like I missed on the input, so let's add that. And that looks great. So now we've got to go get the data. So where do we do that? Well, in a class component, you actually get a bunch of methods for the different lifecycle events. And one of those lifecycle methods is component did mount. And it's a very standard place to put code that you want run whenever the component is first put on the page. Same kind of thing that we did with react use effect and an empty array as the second value. And then we'll go and take the fetch from the react use effect. And 
pop it in there. And now we don't have Pokemon set again, so we need to use this dot set state. And in this case, we'll set the value of Pokemon to that incoming data. And there you have it. Looks pretty good. It's exactly the same thing as we had as a functional component, but now you can see what a class component looks like. To make that a little cleaner, I'm just going to set the variable name to Pokemon. And what that does is when you put that into an ES6 object like this, it sets the key name Pokemon to the data value of Pokemon. Just a nice little shorthand. All right, so that's all it takes to turn a functional component into a class-based component if that's what you want to do. But at least it should give you some familiarity with what class-based components are in React when you see them in probably what is an older code base. All right, so there you go. Class components really quickly. <laughs> okay, so... Wow, thank you so much for watching all of these videos. It's been a pleasure creating them and I hope you've gotten a lot out of them. Out of them. I hope you've really skilled up and I, I just, I would love to see anything that you create. Be sure to DM me at Jaher on Twitter. Show me your GitHub pages links with your cool React apps that you've created. I think it's just awesome. Of course, in the meantime, if you have any questions about this video, hit up the comments section down below. You can go into the description and get the newsletter link and sign up for the Blue Collar Coder newsletter. You get access to these kind of videos a day earlier than everyone else. You get JavaScript tips and tricks. You get links to cool articles. And it's all free, which is great. So if you like, be sure to like and share this video with anyone else who might be interested in it. If you really like these videos, hit that subscribe button. Click on that bell and you'll be notified anytime a new one of these videos comes out. In the meantime, be happy, be healthy, and be safe.